Hey, what's going on guys? This is Tabmach99. Today, I'm going to give you my breakdown of the Mortal Kombat 11 trailer that we all saw for the first time yesterday during the Game Awards. First, let's talk about the part that's not in the trailer, but that they showed at the awards show. This is the part where they made the Mortal Kombat logo entirely out of lightning. Now to me, this suggests that Raiden might very well be the final boss of the game. So, on to the actual trailer. They go right into a battle featuring two classic characters. Raiden vs. Scorpion. That's a nice change of pace from the usual Scorpion vs. Sub-Zero rivalry we're used to seeing. The violence is intense. It's the perfect level of what you want from a Mortal Kombat game. Raiden shows no mercy, exactly like he promised at the end of MKX. Scorpion's fiery rage is as intense as ever. This is exactly what we want from the next Mortal Kombat title. Let's talk about the background for a minute. You can tell this is Shang Tsung's island, specifically his throne room and it's in ruins. I'm thinking that Raiden went and destroyed it. He's definitely acting the way a dark god of thunder should. What's awesome is what happens after the battle's over. Even though Raiden initially won, a different variation of Scorpion emerges to get revenge. He looks like a mishmash of how he did in MK2 and Ultimate MK3. Something funny is going on with the timelines, but what? There should not be two of us. Our realm splintered timelines are merging. And who is this? Judging by the hourglass and not getting distracted by her hourglass figure, we appear to have some kind of time goddess. Already, I'm reminded of a character from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Renette. She's a timestress and an apprentice of the Time Master, Lord Simultaneous. If the Mortal Kombat timestress is anything like her Ninja Turtles counterpart, it's going to be up to her to try and preserve the timeline. Wonder if she'll have some kind of catchphrase. Combat time! Finally, let's talk about the pre-order bonus, Shao Kahn. Judging from his looks, he appears to be a revenant, serving the forces of the Nether Realm. Now, his return should come as no surprise to anyone. For players who were paying attention during MKX, there were some pretty strong hints that Quan Chi was working on finding a way to bring him back. You could see it in his lair. You know, the place where he literally brings people back from the dead, that he's got Shao Kahn's helmet, armor, and wrath hammer all lined up. And in MKX Mobile, the hints were even stronger. You got a couple of different modes that hint very strongly at his return. I'm talking about Quest Mode and Shao Kahn's Tower. In Quest Mode, it's explained that when the Elder Gods destroyed Shao Kahn, they embedded a fragment of Shao Kahn's soul in each of the relics to keep the realm safe from him forever. If the relics are broken, Shao Kahn will be reborn. And when you complete another game mode called Relic Hunt, this happens. So don't be completely surprised if elements from the MKX mobile game actually become canon in Mortal Kombat 11. If you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure you smash that like button, ring that notification bell, subscribe, and of course, check out all the other Mortal Kombat videos I've been doing. Until next time, this is Tabmach99. Peace out.